Good morning and welcome to Russell Temple CME Church this Sunday, December 18th, 2022. My name is Exordia Elaine Sherman and I will be your worship leader for the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our hymn of praise is the choir. Follow that, we will have the invitation. Good afternoon, Russell Temple. Today, our hymn of praise is going to be on page 514 in your hymnal. Jesus, the light of the world. If you know the words, come on and sing along. Good afternoon. I'll be reading Matthew 1, 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. 
His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. <clears throat> All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin was conceived and get, give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Jesus woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to take and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus.
and so on for the reading of the scripture and the ministry of music by the contemporary choir. We will now have the missionary words of gratitude by Sister Louise Hardy, followed by the lighting of the Advent candle from Sister Doris Thor. Good afternoon, everyone. Especially good afternoon, Russell Temple and the supporters of the Women's Missionary Society. This morning, we just want to say thank you for your generous gifts that were received during the Thanksgiving season. And those who were able to help with the Salvation Army outreach of ringing the red kettle bell. And we just want to say that we know it's not an easy time in this world, but we appreciate everything that Russell Temple has done to support us in our outreach efforts. And to put you up to date or bring you up to date as to what you can expect after the new year, we will once again have our Sock and a Dollar Drive Outreach Project. That's where we ask you to put a pair of socks and a dollar bill in a, in a baggie and keep it in your car and give it to homeless people you may encounter throughout your daily activities. And then we will also be collecting medicine bottles for the people in Africa who do not have the luxury of getting their medication in a clean container. So look for that. You will see some announcements coming in. Um, we just want to again say thank you. We wish everyone a very, very blessed and Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. God bless. Oh, and we uh, we have a video to share with you with some of the things that happened at the Red Kettle Bell. Yeah, yeah. Today, today. Said I woke up to the summer shining through. Calling on my friends, asking what's the move. Feeling a little different, I'm on something new. Today, today. I ain't gonna let no clouds get in my way. The only road I'm walking is the one I picked. Catch me sitting in the sun, no top of shade. Today, today. This is the day that the Lord has made Ooh. And I ain't gonna let it slip away I'm gonna be joyful Yes I am, yes I am I'm gonna be joyful Today I'm gonna be joyful Ooh. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, gonna be joyful I got the feeling that you get when you get new kicks. Bell ringing on the last day of singing, yeah. High fiving everybody, but we out of here. Today, today. So fast, life comes and goes. Make it last, best slow your road. They don't take it as a choice, but you gotta know that today's, today's the day. Ooh. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I ain't gonna let it slip away, nah. I'm gonna be joyful. Ooh, gonna be, I'm gonna be joyful. Today, I'm gonna be joyful. Yes, I am, yes, I am. I'm gonna be joyful. Today, today. I got the joy down to my heart, down to my heart, down to my heart. I got the. Joy, joy down to my heart, down to my heart, down to my heart. I got the J-O-Y, down to my heart, down to my heart, down to my heart. I got the joy, joy down to my heart, too dang, too dang, mm. Good afternoon, church family and friends. Today we will be lighting the fourth candle, the candle of love. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Now we will light the candle. I will be reading Isaiah, the seventh chapter, 10th through the 16th verse. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, 
Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I would not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, your house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. Verse 16, for before the boy knew enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This long awaiting son comes in the form of a love, of love incarnation. How are you prepared for the hope, peace, joy, and love incarnated that the Messiah brings? Let us pray. God of love, the day is near. Help us to prepare for the coming of Christ and may our hearts rejoice in him. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. We want to thank the missionaries and Sister Hardy for that wonderful, wonderful presentation and Sister Thorne for the lighting of the Advent candle. And I just want to say to the missionaries, for us, and our family, you guys have started a movement because with the socks and the dollar, I give a do I keep dollars in my car. It started my sister because I do it in New Orleans. She started doing the same thing. The pills in a bottle, our brother-in-law sends us all his empty pills so we can don the pill bottles so we can donate it to the church. So thank you for starting something in our family. We will now have the offering of pills by Sister Harriet Anderson, followed by All Things of Me, and then the observance of the 151st CMA Founders by Sister Wanda Thurman Wynn. Good afternoon, everyone. It is offering time. A time for us to give back to the Lord a little, a little of what, the, a lot of what he's given to us, but a little that we have given to him. So we're asking you today, for your offerings. We, um, we have several ways that we pay our offerings. You know, as you know, we have um, the GiveLify, we have the Cash App, we have the PayPal. Then we have um, the mail-in. You can mail it to Russell Temple, CME Church, 507 North Alfred Street, Alexandria, Virginia, 22314. Or another way, you can bring it to the church and drop it in the mail slot. And last of all, you can call any one of the stewards, the stewards, and they will assist you if you call them. Okay? Thank you. of talking to you about Founders Day. That is why we exist. And actually it's the 152nd year of Founders Day. So let me get started about CME, how we got started. Here are some few highlights. I got up this morning and said, words won't do. So let me create a visual for you. That is what you are seeing at this time. Founders Day. 16 December 1870, 
we have a rich history. The Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, very familiarly known as the CME Church, was organized December the 16th, 1870. I'm going to pause right here. Just ponder on that. 152 years of service. They were and we still do. In Jackson, Tennessee, 41 former slaves, members of the Methodist Episcopal Church South, composed primarily of African Americans. The CME Church is a branch of Wesleyan Methodist founded and organized by John Wesley in England in 1844 and established in America as the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1784. As such, it is a church of Jesus Christ adhering to the basic tenets of historic Methodism welcoming into his fellowship any and all desiring to flee from the wrath to come and be saved from their sins. The CME church came into being in the tumultuous aftermath of the Civil War in throes of reconstruction. Beginning in 1619, the enslavement of Native Africans captured in their homeland and transported to America under horrendous, horrendous conditions known as the Middle Passage, became integral to the American way of life. By the 19th century, chattel slavery, especially on the, on the cotton cane and tobacco plantations of the South, had become the peculiar institution, despite the principles and precepts of Jesus Christ. Foremost among them was the Methodist Episcopal Church South, which in 1844 had separated from the Methodist Church over the issue of slavery. When the Civil War began in 1860, it had more enslaved members than any other religious denomination. At the end of the war, amidst its devastation, almost 100,000 members remained in the Church South. It, it was of these members that in 1866, in the General Conference, of that church asks, what shall be done to promote the religious interests of our colored members? The answer was predicated on the expressed desires and requests of those colored members. And after doing all of that, the 41 gathered to organize. And what happened after that, former slaves gathered in Jackson in 1870 were duly elected and properly authorized to organize their own separate and independent colored Methodist Episcopal Church, changed to Christian Methodists in 1954. They elected William Henry Miles, you see him in the middle here, and the next bishop was Richard Vanderhorst, the first bishops. And so you see on the slide, there's the first five representation of the five consecutive bishops, uh, William Miles is in the middle and organizing, as we know, was number one. The CME Church is organized in 11 Episcopal districts, nine in the continental United States and two on the continent of Africa. Each Episcopal, Episcopal district consists of geographical regions presided over by bishops elected by the General Conference. And so to wrap this all up, this article, I must mention, was written somewhat by Bishop Hawthorne Lakey. And I say to you all, happy Founders Day, CME parishioners. Thank you so much, Sister Har Harriet Anderson, for the offering appeal, and Sister Wanda Thurman for the observance of um, founders. And you are so right. We do have a very rich history. So thank you for reminding us of that. We appreciate it. We will now have the hymn of preparation by the IT team, followed by a gospel message from our pastor, Reverend Kevin Agee. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here this afternoon who knows that his name is wonderful? Amen. If you know that his name is wonderful, you just ought to give God some praise. Amen. If you know Jesus' name is wonderful, you ought to give him some praise. Somebody ought to type hallelujah in the chat. Amen. If you're sharing a device with somebody else, why don't you just touch your loved one and say his name is wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to type his name is wonderful in the chat. We greet you in Jesus' joy. 
on this afternoon. God is an awesome God. Amen. Praise God. We give God thanks. We give God praise for another opportunity to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. Jesus said the hour comes and now is when the true worship will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As we gather together this afternoon, my brothers and sisters, if the Holy Spirit is uh, wi willing, I don't plan to be before you very long this afternoon. I want to call your attention to the gospel uh, lectionary reading, which was uh, read for your hearing, the gospel according to St. Matthew uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 18 through 25. I would like to call your attention, beloved, I'd like to call your attention to verses 21 through 25. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. In the New Revised Standard Version, you'll find these words. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him Jesus. Just for a few moments this afternoon, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, think reflect, meditate, and pray with me on the thought. They named him Jesus. They named him Jesus. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Now in the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Story of the birth of Jesus. Familiar story. Most of us are familiar with the story. You see the background, the text here, the angel came and in Matthew's account of the nativity, the angel came and spoke to Joseph. The early father told him that his fiance was going to conceive and bear a son. And as you might expect, when Joseph initially received this news, he didn't find it to be such good news. As would any man in that particular instance, he had an extremely difficult time wrapping himself around the concept that his fiance, with whom he had not any had not had any conjugal relations would actually bear a child. You know, that's something that any man would have a difficult time dealing with. But the angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph. And, 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 and even though Joseph received this news, even though it was difficult for him, still Joseph loved his fiance Mary so much that he didn't want to, he, he didn't want to cause her any public disgrace. So he was going to break off the engagement privately so as not to embarrass her. But the angel of the Lord spoke to, to Joseph, or Gabriel in this case. The angel spoke to Joseph and he said, no, don't, don't let her go. Take Mary to be your wife. Go ahead and marry your fiance. She has not done anything wrong. She's not committed any sin. The child she is going to bear is going to be the child of God. The child she is going to bear is going to be the child of the Holy Spirit. Think of the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to convince Joseph to accept that on faith. And both Joseph and Mary demonstrated great faith and they were obedient to the calling which God placed on their lives. And the text goes on to tell us that both Mary and Joseph were obedient to the calling. And Joseph took Mary to be his wife and they the son was born and they did not have any marital relations until after the son was born. And the text goes on to say 
that they named him Jesus. But what I want to focus on just for a few moments this afternoon, my brothers and my sisters, is the significance of the name Jesus. Here you see in the gospel lectionary reading that this is, in fact, the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Old Testament. And when we lit the Advent candle today, you actually heard the reading of the Old Testament gospel, uh, lectionary reading for this afternoon from, um, from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. And if you look at the gospel lection this afternoon at verse, uh, verses 22 and 23, it says, all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So as you see and hear from the reading of the Old Testament uh, lectionary reading, you see that this prophecy is the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, which is fulfilled in the day of the New Testament. And what I want to call your attention to, beloved, is a pattern. You know, anytime you see this, even though you, anytime you see language like this, it says they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Anytime you see that, that and, and, and that's a pattern that you see often in the Old Testament, when, 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 when persons who are major in a faith tradition are given a certain name, and that name has certain spiritual significance, such is the case with the name Jesus. There's a reason why the angel gave those specific instructions in the first chapter of the gospel, according to Matthew. It says they shall name him Jesus. Isn't that right? The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Jesus, which means God is with us. As a matter of fact, if you back up the verse number 21, it says she will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I want you to put a put a put a put a put a bookmark right there. Put a put a marketplace right there. Stop right there. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Anytime you see that in sacred scripture, if you look at the words following the word for, that gives you clear me, clear guidance as to what the name means. So when you think about the name Jesus, the name Jesus that we see in the New Testament in the Hebrew is derived from a name Yahashua, which was later shortened to Yeshua. And it's the same derivative as the Old Testament names Jehoshua and Joshua. And if you look at the name Jesus, the name Jesus and, 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 and Joshua and, 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 and Jehoshua are derived from the Old Testament name for God that was so holy. That that, 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 that that scholars wouldn't even write the whole name out. They would only print the consonants in all capital letters. The Old Testament name for the Lord is Yahweh. And when you read the Old Testament, every time you see the word Lord in all capital letters in the Old Testament, that is that holy name, that name, Yahweh, the name that was so holy that practitioners of the faith and scholars of the Hebrew Bible couldn't even write out the consonants. They just print out Y-H-W-H in all capital letters. So when you think about that name, Jesus, and the reason why the instruction was given, that they, they, you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means the Lord saves. The name Jesus means the Lord is salvation. The, word, the name Jesus means the Lord is a saving cry. The name Jesus means the Lord is a cry for saving. The, word, the name Jesus means the Lord is a cry for help. The name Jesus means the Lord is my help. Not only that, but that name also means to liberate. So it also means that the name Jesus means to liberate. It also means that Jesus is our liberator. And notice that you see in terms of the fulfillment of the prophecy. Notice that the verse in verse 23 points you to um, Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, where it says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive a bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. And notice in the New Testament in Matthew 1, 23, it goes on to say, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The name of Jesus means that God is in fact 
with us. As a matter of fact, we can always, we can even say that Jesus is, in fact, our Emmanuel. If you listen to one of the stanzas of the great uh, Advent and Christmas Tide hymn uh, from Charles Wesley, it said, one of the stanzas says, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity, please as men with men to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. And as some translations say, please as man with men to appear, Jesus, our Emmanuel here. Now, there are other translations that say, please as men, as man with men to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. That's a contemporary translation that's non-gender specific that says, please as flesh with flesh to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. Isn't it good to know that Jesus is indeed our Savior? Isn't it good to know that Jesus is indeed our Emmanuel? Isn't it good to know that Jesus is indeed our liberator? So when we think about that name, y'all heard the song, the, the, the hymn of preparation. His name is wonderful. There's so much about the name of Jesus. I don't have time to tell you everything about the name of Jesus on this afternoon. But Jesus is an awesome name. Isn't that right? The Apostle Paul in the second chapter of his letter to the Philippians says that Jesus is the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, what an awesome name, isn't that right? In the fourth chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, Peter said that there's no other name under heaven by which mortals may be saved. All of that, my brothers and my sisters and more, is in the name of Jesus. My brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, we are so grateful that Joseph and Mary were faithful to their calling. They followed the guidance of the Lord that was communicated to them through the angel Gabriel, and he gave the Lord that name that is above every name. He gave them that name that means he is a wonderful counselor. They gave him that name that means that he is a mighty God. They gave him that name that means that he is a, 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 an everlasting father. They gave him that name that means that he is the Prince of Peace. They gave him that name that is above every other name. Jesus, Yahashua, Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus, the Lord saves, Jesus, the Lord is our Savior, Jesus, the Lord is salvation, Jesus, the Lord is the saving cry, Jesus, the name is our cry for him, Jesus, the Lord is help, Jesus, the Lord is Jesus, Emmanuel, Jesus, the word who became flesh and among us, full of grace and full of truth. Jesus, Messiah. Jesus, anointed one. Jesus, the Christ. Jesus, the Jesus, 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 beginning and the end. Jesus, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is. The hymn writer, Frederick Whitfield, said, There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. That name tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. That name Jesus tells me what my Father has in store for every day. And though I yield a darksome path, though I tread a darksome path, yield sunshine all the way, the songwriter told me that that name Jesus tells me of a loving God who feels my deepest woe, who any sorrow bears apart that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Again, Charles Wesley said, uh, Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrow cease, tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. My brothers and my sisters, I don't know about y'all, but I'm so glad that they named him Jesus. Every now and then, when we used to go to annual conference, one of the ministers, who was also a musician, used to play an old, old, old song from back in the day. 
You are to call him by his name. 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 His name is Jesus. 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 Call him by his name. Give God some praise. They named him Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 says, we love because he first loved us. None of us could possibly love Jesus without him loving us first. Beloved, Jesus loves you, and Jesus loves you unconditionally this afternoon. I dare not have the audacity to automatically assume that everybody is 100% positive, that he or she is saved, that his or her sins are forgiven, that he or she knows Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. If you would like to invite Jesus to be a Lord, the Lord and Savior of your life, if you'd like to be forgiven of your sins, if you'd like to be assured that your soul is saved, it's really so very easy. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. It's just that simple. If there's one who would like to give your life to Christ this afternoon, who'd like to ask Jesus to forgive you, and like to invite Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, you can let it be known. If you feel so bold, feel so inclined, you can unmute and publicly profess your desire to do that right here. If you'd rather do something a little bit more direct and personal with the pastor, you can either type a public or private message in the chat, or you can call or text at 201-736-9107. Or you can even send me a private message uh, through social media. But beloved, Jesus wants you to be a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus does not want anyone to be lost. Jesus wants everyone to spend eternity in heaven with him. If there's anyone, beloved, who's already saved, who's already a believer, but you'd like to recommit or rededicate your life to the Lord, or if you feel a calling on your life, preach, to exhort, to start a new ministry in the life of the church, we invite you to make that commitment this afternoon as well by the same means. Last but not least, if anyone is worshiping with us this afternoon who's in need of a church home, we'd love to have you at Russell Temple, a faithful body of God's believers, a, a body of believers who loves God, who loves the Bible, who loves the church, and most importantly, even and, and the, the next most important thing behind loving God is that we love people. Amen. We'd love to have you as a part of our church family. Same means uh, my phone number was just placed in the chat. Please feel free. Beloved, even when we gather virtually for worship, still know that the doors of the church are wide open on the hinges of welcome. Is there one who will commit his or her life to Christ this afternoon? Is there one who will recommit or rededicate his or her life to the Lord this afternoon? Is there one who will join the church this afternoon? The doors of the church are now open. Is there one? <clears throat> I don't see any reactions or any messages. Beloved, let us prepare to go before the Lord in prayer. As we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer, we're so thankful and so grateful that God answers prayer. Isn't that right? The Bible says in, in, the, in the general epistle of James chapter 5, the latter part of verse 16, that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Amen. Don't y'all believe that? The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. As we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer uh, this afternoon, we want to lift up our worship leader. Uh, exhorter Elaine Sherman. She's going to uh, undergo a medical treatment, medical procedure on tomorrow. And we're trusting God. Hallelujah. We're trusting God. Amen. We're trusting God for a procedure with no complications. Amen. We're trusting God for a medical procedure with a slip, a swift, complete recovery. Isn't that right? We just want to go before the Lord in prayer. Also, beloved, we're glad that uh, Reverend Wynn is worshiping with us today. He's still not 100%. He's still recovering. Uh, he said a couple of things during church school, but not as much as normal. So we just want to pray God's continued healing 
upon our brother, Reverend Daniel Wynn. Amen. And we lift up everyone in our church family who is experiencing health challenges. We lift up all of our loved ones, family members, and, and, and close friends of our members of our church family who are experiencing health challenges. We continue to pray God's comfort, strength, and peace upon all families who have recently experienced loss. And we lift up everyone. We lift up everyone who's going through their first Christmas holiday season without a loved one who has transitioned from labor to reward. And we lift up everyone for whom the holidays are a difficult time. I see the message in the chat. Yes, the flu season is brutal. Amen. You know, not just so we're dealing with uh, some some uptake and upsurge in the uh, coronavirus, but also we have the uh, you know we have the, the flu season itself is brutal. Then we have that RSV. You know, so really, some uh, some folk are calling it a pandemic. Amen. The pandemic is having an impact on people. So we lift up all of God's children affected by the pandemic. And not only do we encourage you to pray. My grandma always taught me watch as well as pray. So not only do we want you to pray, but we want you to be careful, amen. We want you to wear your masks when you go around people, even though we're not required to wear our mask every place. I want you to go above and beyond the CDC guidelines, amen. And if you haven't been vaccinated, please, ma'am, please, sir, get your whatever whatever coronavirus vaccine you need to get. If you haven't had any vaccines, if, if it's not going to you know, jeopardize your health to get them, get the vaccine. Amen. If you've had the vaccine, get the boosters. Amen. My wife and I, we've had our third boosters already, and we encourage others to do likewise. Amen. That's my testimony. Amen. Because even if you get it, if you have, if you had the vaccine and the booster, your chances are so much greater that you'd be asymptomatic and that you won't end up in the hospital or on a ventilator. Come on, somebody. Isn't that right? I'm a witness. Amen. That when I had it, I was double boosted at the time when I had it. I had no symptoms whatsoever. I feel I felt just as great as I feel right now. Amen. But the bottom line is, you know, when you're at risk, you reduce your risk exponentially if you're vaxxed and boosted. Amen. So please do that. Please get your flu shots. Amen. My wife and I got our flu shot, our pneumonia shot, and our third booster. Amen. Please, man, please, sir, take precautions. Amen. Watch as well as pray. Hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. O thou in whose presence my soul takes delight, on whom in affliction I call, my comfort by day and my song in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the many wonderful blessings you have bestowed upon your people. Thank you, Lord, for healing us in our affliction. Thank you, Lord, for comforting us in our sorrow. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening us in our weakness. Thank you, Lord, for encouraging us in our depression. Thank you, Lord, for providing for us in our time of need. Thank you, Lord, for releasing us from when we are captive. Thank you, Lord, for liberating us when we are oppressed. And, oh, Lord, our God, we thank you for supplying our every need according to your riches and glory. <clears throat> Lord, we lift up all of our brothers and sisters facing health challenges. We lift up all of our brothers and sisters who have experienced loss and grief. Lord God, we pray that you would abide with the exhorter Sherman as she prepares to undergo her medical procedure. We pray your continued blessings upon the recovery of our brother, Reverend Daniel. Lord God, we pray that you bless every precious soul assembled within the sound of my voice. We pray, oh God, that you would bless every household and every family represented by this worshiping congregation. We pray, oh God, that you bless every family and every household represented by this body of faithful believers. Lord, we pray that you would continue to help us put all of our hope, all of our faith, and all of our trust in you. In the precious name of Jesus, our Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let me try to do my quick commercials. I'm going to try to do them in less than two minutes combined. Amen. Please join us this afternoon for our annual Christmas program at three o'clock. Amen. It'll be beautiful, but it won't be long. Somebody ought to say amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow evening, my brothers and sisters will have our church conference. So we won't have a very long agenda. Uh, we'll do things as expeditiously as we can. Uh, we'll abbreviate, but which we can do to keep it from going too long. But please, man, please, sir, those who are able, we invite you to join us. I know a couple of folk need to be excused for various reasons who've already communicated, but those who will do join us, we won't keep you very long. This Wednesday is the fourth final Wednesday of our Advent series. We give God thanks and praise. Uh, Sister Hardy started us off with uh, hope, amen, and Sister Ronnie Pace followed up with peace, Brother Jeff Johnson last week with joy. And this week we conclude with love. Sister Kim Carr will be our messenger for this Wednesday evening at seven o'clock on love, amen. To God be the glory. Christmas Eve, you saw the slide, those of you who are watching on the Zoom, uh, we invite you to worship uh, the uh, various uh, ministry alliances of the Washington, Virginia District combined will host uh, Christmas Eve service. Seven o'clock on Saturday evening, we'll be worshiping right around an hour. Amen. Uh, you saw our theme is the greatest gift. Amen. The greatest gift of all. Jesus is indeed the greatest gift of all. Amen. We invite you to worship with us on Zoom on uh, Saturday evening at seven o'clock. Next Sunday morning is Christmas Day. Amen. And, you know, when I was uh, saying what we would do until we get ready to go in the sanctuary in person two Sundays a month in January, somehow or another, I managed to overlook the fact that Christmas Day is on a Sunday. It's been a minute since Christmas Day was on a Sunday. One of our seasoned saints was kind enough to suggest that, that, that I consider one service on Sunday morning. And, uh, and, we, and the, the more, this morning before church school, our superintendent informed me that, that customarily you don't have church school on Christmas morning. So when I proposed it to the church school, the response was overwhelming. Everybody was ecstatic. So my brothers and sisters, next Sunday for Christmas morning, ordinarily, you know, we'd have a joint Christmas service at 10 o'clock. But what we're gonna do is we won't have church school next Sunday morning, but for Russell Temple, we'll have our regular worship service at 10 a.m. on Christmas morning. It ain't gonna be long, amen. Pastor's going to do one of the little 10, 12 minute specials. Amen. We already got the music recorded for Christmas Day. We ain't going to be on long, but we're going to praise the Lord in the spirit of the Christmas season. Amen. Missionaries, thank you so very much for your leadership and making our church mission minded. Amen. We all missionaries, whether we're members of society or not. And I think uh, Exhorter Sherman was right on time when she said you started the movement. Amen. So we, we want all of us to be a part 
of the movement. Amen. <clears throat> Last but not least, thank you to our director of Christian Education and Formation, Sister Wanda, for a beautiful uh, commemoration of the 152nd birthday of the CME Church. Now, we celebrate Jesus' birthday in December. Jesus wasn't really born in December, and most scholars think he might have been joined in the spring. We born in the spring. We just celebrate his birthday in December. But the CME Church was actually born in December. Amen. December 16th, 1870, to be specific. So we thank God for 152 years of our Zion. And as we close out this celebration of the birthday of the CME Church, instead of the doxology, you know, before the benediction, what we'd like to play for you this afternoon is a beautiful uh, video two years ago for the 150th uh, anniversary of the celebration of the CME Church's birth. Uh, a beautiful video was recorded with sons and daughters of bishops of the CME Church singing the, the hymn, the CME Church hymn, which was actually composed by the third bishop of the CME Church, Bishop Lucius H. Holsey. Uh, they called that group Children of Episcopacy. So instead of the doxology, before we have our benediction, enjoy the beautiful YouTube video, the Children of Episcopacy, the sons and daughters of the bishops of the CME Church singing our CME hymn, also known as the Holsey hymn, or Rapturous Scenes. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. We'll see some of you at three o'clock. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.